I had been single for a very long time. My kids kept telling me to get back into the swing of things, but I just kept making excuses. My nephew told me about this dating site. He said there was no harm in talking to people, so I did it. I put everything out there so there were no surprises when or if they met me. I thought that if they still contacted me after reading all I had described myself and we matched, then maybe I would have coffee with them. Well, I matched with a few and the conversation went well. I met with one gentleman who was way too regimental for my crazy life and kindly declined any more involvement with him. Another guy seemed too pushy and acted like I should be honoured to be in his presence. But then there came, we will call him Richard. Now, please keep in mind, I had very low self-esteem at the time. That being said, Richard seemed great. We carried on conversations for hours. He lived an hour and a half away, so all we could really do was talk to each other. We talked about our kids, dreams, goals. My daughter even friended one of his sons on Facebook. I was a secretary for some self-help meetings in my town, and he was going to school to be a counsellor. Perfect, right? We talked for at least four months, but after a while, I noticed he kept having small problems come up. Arguments with his mom, with whom he was living, no money for gas, his truck broke down, his oldest boy was mad at him. Just little things, you know? Not anything that would set me off, but it was poor me to heck with the attitude. I tried to let that go and really be a positive influence in his life. His mother and boys loved me and told me that they had never seen him so happy. Times went on and we were still talking every day. <clears throat> I had an opportunity to come see him and of course, my daughter went with me so she could meet his son in person as well. I took him and his son out to eat at the only little coffee shop in that town. He knew I was on a fixed income, but I paid anyway because he was going to school and didn't have an income as of yet. We had a good time. We met at his son's house on a hilltop town. We were having such a good time that we didn't notice that the snow was coming down hard and the roads were icing up. So my daughter and I stayed the night in one of the rooms. It seemed like the closer we got to his family, the more distant they became to him. It was odd. The next day, the roads were clear, so we said our goodbyes and went home. But before we left, I received one extra hug from his son's mother-in-law. She whispered in my ear, don't fall for him. I thought that maybe there was something she didn't like about me that came out of the left field. The next few days we didn't talk. I thought that was odd. Did I do something wrong? Someone from the self-help meeting told me that there was a man looking for me. She said he looked disheveled and smelled like alcohol. This wasn't a surprise to me because I had helped quite a few people get back on their feet. Maybe this one fell from the wagon and just needed to talk. As I was driving down my street, I saw a truck in my driveway I didn't recognize at first. It was him. He found out where I lived and was sitting in front of my house. At first I was happy until I looked in his truck and saw him slumped over, reeking of booze. At that point, my fix mo's set in and I asked him in for some strong coffee. He told me that he'd had a blowout with his mother and she kicked him out and his boys won't talk to him. I got on some clean clothes and told him to take a shower. I figured we could sort it out the next day. In the meantime, I was taking him to a meeting. He sobered up and agreed to go. The whole time at the meeting, my friends were acting like I'd lost my mind. Did they see something I was blind of? We went back to my house and he seemed okay. Almost too okay. Like nothing at all had happened. My son pulled me aside and told me he didn't like him much, but thought that maybe he was just being overprotective. I should have paid more attention. We went to the store because I wasn't prepared for the extra mouth and I bought four two litres of a soda or a gallon of milk and two monsters for both him and my son, some chips and other things for dinner. After we ate, we all watched some TV and headed off to bed. I let him sleep on the spare bed in my room, but in the middle of the night, he tried to get frisky. At the point, no. My grown kids were in the other room and something just didn't sit well with me. Like he wasn't the same man he was before. The next morning, my daughter came running out of the bathroom, angry. 
she said in a loud voice. Someone pissed all over the toilet. He didn't say a word. Later, we were all eating breakfast, and he started to let food drop out of his mouth onto the table and floor, and was spitting food while he was talking. He took three two liters and drank them back to back, letting some run down his chin. What the hell? Then, yes, there is more. He took the remote and started to setting future recordings for his favorite shows and deleting a few of my grandchildren's. He set recordings for weeks in advance. Wait, wait, wait. What are you doing, my friend? This is not cool. I told him. He acted like I said nothing. Then he went to the refrigerator and told me that I had to go to the store to buy more soda and stuff because it was all gone. Like it was gone. He even drank my son's monster and the whole gallon of milk. One day, mind you, only one. At this point, my daughter was also livid, so she contacted his son and he proceeded to tell her that Richard's mother kicked him out because he wouldn't get a job and was stealing money and eating her out of house and home. His other son didn't talk to him because he keeps asking for money and won't pay him back. He himself was mad at him for lying to me by telling me that he was going to school when he wasn't and using me as his next big meal ticket. Well, that was it. I got all his stuff together, took her to his truck and asked him to leave. It doesn't end there. He had loosened some bolts on his transmission, making it impossible to move. He begged and pleaded for me to let him stay. He was at that point, snot was coming out of his nose. Good God. He said that he just wanted to be close to me. And if that meant sleeping in his truck, he would do that. And he couldn't live without me. Well, hell to the no. I called his older son and told him that if they didn't come with a tow truck and get their dad, his fate was not going to be nice. They arrived two hours later, apologizing for their father's actions. We found out through his son that for many years, he had gone through quite a few unhealthy relationships and took advantage of a lot of women that fell for his lies. He still tries to friend me on Facebook to this day. I'm currently renting an old small farmhouse on a few acres, along with my son and my two grandchildren with whom I am raising. I'm very sensitive, so I know whether there's anything negative around, so I don't know what this was. When we first moved in, almost three years ago, my granddaughter was dancing in the bedroom. She wanted me to make a video, so I did. It was the sweetest thing, but the camera got fuzzy, so I told her to wait while I fixed it. But of course, she continued to laugh and dance to the music. I didn't find anything wrong, so as I aimed the camera back, I saw a very distinct orb dancing around with her. Shocked, I gasped and it took off. Thinking I caught it on video, I must have played it back 10 or so times, but I couldn't find anything. A few months later, I met a man who informed me that he was raised in this house, and nothing bad ever happened, and nobody died there. Every once in a while, one of us might see an orb, but nothing bad. Then there was a time after my sister's death. My son, his fiancée, and my grandson saw something dark in my bedroom doorway. But it went away when it found it couldn't get in my room, and that was in 2018. I tried to keep my house light and calm, wavering from anything negative for just this reason. I have a king size bed I share with my two grandchildren. They have the option to sleep elsewhere, but they choose to sleep with me. For about a week, my room has been cold. I just thought it was because it was a bit cold outside, and this is an old house. But the night before last, it was simply too cold for comfort. My mind wasn't on anything negative being there. I didn't feel anything. I took the kids in, as I do, Caden by my side so he doesn't wake up, and Rome, and Maddie on the other end. We were all tired, so we fell fast asleep. This is where it got weird. Something woke me up. I felt cold pressure on my legs. Thinking it was one of my dogs, I sat up to move, but none of them were in my room. I thought that was odd, so I went back to sleep. Then I was awakened again, feeling like my foot was getting pulled and once again, nothing. 
At this point, I made sure the kids were covered because despite the heater on full blast in my room, I could see my breath. Still not thinking there was anything paranormal going on, I turned over and wrapped myself with the blanket and fell back to sleep. Just then, it felt like my whole body was being smothered and squeezed hard, almost like I was wrapped in an ice cold weight blanket, so tight I couldn't move. When I opened my eyes, I was gasping for air and the room was darker than usual. I could still see everything and my blanket was loose. This went on a few more times. Getting poked awake or nudged from the side, the kids weren't on. By now, I'm so exhausted and annoyed. I got up and went to the bathroom, checked the heater and went back to sleep. Only this time I had a bad dream, almost like the one I've had before. I was in my childhood temple, but it was bigger. People were there that passed years ago, but they never directly looked at me. It was like they were talking to me, but not at me. There was an event I was asked to participate with, and I was there with my grandson. There were people like Sunday school teachers that kept telling me that my grandson was okay in a different room, with a different named person every time. I asked where he was, and if he was okay. Then things didn't seem right, and the people I thought I knew had changed, and started to look away from me. Finally, feeling worried that I hadn't seen my grandson, I started frantically looking for him, hearing someone say that he went outside with one of the boys. I could feel the fear pulsing through my veins, and my heart beating hard. The next thing I see is that I'm standing on a road, and there is a crew of police cars with a search party looking in the woods, and I was praying he would be found. Then I woke up crying. I held him tight and went back to sleep. I couldn't have been sleeping long before a piercing scream in my ear woke me up and I shot out of bed. My whole body felt like I got hit by a Mack truck. I looked at the clock and I had only been in bed for three hours. The kids were still sound asleep, so I just got up and made some coffee. As I came into the living room, all the dogs were there, which is weird because they always sleep with me. All day I felt confused. I didn't understand what that was all about. Last night I cleansed my room and filled it with light and love, along with a string of blue Christmas lights, and the room stayed warm without the heater. Today, I'll cleanse my house more thoroughly. When I was a little girl, living in Hollywood, California, it was a carefree time. Doors were unlocked and the feeling that everyone watched out for your children was very prevalent. We didn't have computers and cell phones or tablo tablets if you wanted to talk to a friend. You called them on a corded house phone. We mostly had seven or eight channels on our TV brought in by antennas on the roof. I was a very social child. I was the first to meet the neighbours every time someone moved in. It was a quiet street with large trees, great for climbing. When I wasn't in school, I made my way down the block every day, rounding up my friends so we could all play together. Every neighborhood wouldn't be complete without a mom and pops living there. Mom's handing out baked goods to the kids, and pops showing us tricks with coins, and letting us visit his workshop from time to time. They had a son, but I don't remember seeing much of him. Time grew on, and things started to change. I noticed the old man would take walks like he usually did. But when he got around six houses down, his wife would walk after him, and they would walk back together. He started staring at me while I was outside playing in my yard, and motioned for me to come over. And when I did, he put his hand in his pocket, jingling his change, looking almost through me, whispering something I couldn't hear. Then his wife would come again. We ended up moving from next door to across the street from their house, and he would just stand there watching me only jingling his change when I looked in his direction. One day, his wife ended up in hospital. I think the stress was too much for her. That's when I saw their son more. He seemed like a sad young man. I didn't know why. When mom came home, my mother was instrumental in many ways, helping her out. On a few occasions, pops were okay. He asked me to spend time with him. We talked a lot and even made little things out of wood in his workshop, in the back behind their house. 
I didn't see anything wrong with it. He was Pops, and I was a very young child. He often gave me things. A marble, a great pop top, a broken chain. But he made it seem like they were glorious things he was giving me. His son started watching us when we were back there, from the back porch. But I didn't think anything of it at the time. One day, I was in their house. My mother sent me over to give them something she'd baked for them. And while moms were putting it in the kitchen, Pops pulled me aside and put this thing in my hand, saying I earned it. Looking down, I saw that it was a purple heart. His purple heart. I told him no, that thing is far too important and that he needs to keep it. Well, when Mums comes around the corner, she took it from my hand and with that, he yelled out, hey, that's mine, and tried to hit her. She told me to go, so I ran home thinking I did something wrong and told my mother. All she could say is, a poor lady, what she has to go through. It was only later that I found out he used to physically abuse her quite often. He suffered from PTSD and took it out on her all the time. A few months later, I was crossing the street to visit my friend and there he was. I hadn't seen him in a while, so I was pleasantly surprised. I ran up to give him a hug, as I always did. This time, he grabbed both my wrists and looked down into my eyes and said, You have to know this. How he was acting startled me. He said, I love you, I love you. Will you marry me? I told him that I was just a little girl and that he should go home now. He then let go of my wrists and hugged me hard. Then let go and put his hand in his pocket, jingling his change. He then reached in his other pocket and handed me a beautiful diamond ring that was clearly too big for me. I told him that he should give this to his wife and that's when he said that she didn't understand him. I then told him that this was way too expensive for a child to have but he insisted that I take the ring and say yes, assuring me it was fake so it was okay and he was not about to back down so I took it home. A few days later, thinking it wasn't a big deal, I showed my mother Upon inspection, she said that it was real and that it had to be returned. I came to find out it was his wife's wedding ring. She'd left it on the sink and she was looking for it for weeks. Later that month, there was all kinds of commotion. Ambulances and fire trucks swarmed the streets in front of their house. The old man we called Pops shot himself in the head in their living room, leaving his son to clean his father's brain matter off the wall. The neighborhood was never the same, and we moved shortly after. The Pacific Northwest is a place of wonder, and where we believe creatures of lore exist. There have been too many various sightings here. I wouldn't say demonic in nature, more like there are tangible beings. The skies are vast, the air is clean, and there's a mystic feeling here. Almost as if when you turn a corner, you might see a fairy. We never want to live anywhere else. I've been renting a farm style house with my two grandchildren, my son and his fiancée, for almost three years now. We have a well under the back half of the house and a pump house behind us. There are around 10 acres of land looking out towards Mount Rainer. And we have a two-car garage connected to a big workshop and next to us is forest. All the things I will be describing has been spread out since we've lived on this property. Sometimes we hear screams coming from the forest and all the wildlife becomes still and quiet. Occasionally we've listened to what sounds like a metal chair scraping on a concrete floor in the distance that echoes over our land. I talked to the young man and his brother, who currently live on the same lot but close to the forest, and they told me that they hear it too, but stay in after dark because it feels like they're being watched. They all think that there is something off with this land. His brother also shared what he sees a demon boy, as he puts it, in his room and other places in the house. I asked him why he calls him a demon, in which he replied, because he scares me and messes with my stuff. I really don't think it's a demon, but what he saw and what we saw in our house will be for another time to tell. 
As for the noises in the forest, I have compared these sounds to various wildlife indigenous to the area, but found nothing. This was when we first moved here on this property that is surrounded by farms. One late night, I was driving down the lonely road home, lit only by a handful of streetlights. I saw a flash of eyes in the distance. Not wanting to hit what I thought might be a deer, I slowed down. When I arrived at where I thought it was, it was gone. But the side of the headlights shined on something greyish white. And I noticed something almost the size of a man crawling into the bushes. I saw its back muscles and shoulder blades and its back leg. There was no fur, no tail, and no feathers. Just a light coloured muscular creature. I quickly turned the corner, hoping to see it crawl out over the train tracks on the other side of the bushes, but it wasn't there. So I went home. I know what I saw. My headlights shined on it. I will try to compile all we have seen in these three years. We know there's something going on in this land. My two adult children, my son's fiance and I have seen a tall white creature. It stands about seven feet tall, with large eyes peeking around the workshop, revealing its head, chest, shoulder, arm with its hand on the wall, and part of its foot. Or it peeks into the garage window. And we have seen this on many occasions. A few times from my son's window upstairs. My daughter was here for a visit once. She thought she dropped something earlier out back when she was playing with the kids in the yard. It was dark, so she and my son went out there and they both had flashlights to find whatever it was she dropped. They were searching for a while when they heard something rustle in the tall grass beyond them. She shined her light in the direction of the noise and standing tall there in the field was the same creature. So they both ran like hell back to the house. She later moved out of state, and it's been over a year since this happened. So before I wrote this, I gave her a call. I didn't want to lead the conversation, so I simply asked her what she remembered. She described that thing to a T, and went on by telling me about the time she saw it on the roof of the garage, where both her wings meet. She stepped out of the front porch, and something caught her eye over the garage. She said she stepped closer, and it tilted its head. My daughter then turned to tell her brother to look, and when she looked back it was gone. Then, of course, she had to ask me, Don't you remember me telling you? And you thought I was on drugs or something? I do remember that, and I apologised. I don't think this or these things have ill intent, or at least I would hope not. It's just scary. On an early evening, my son and his fiance were leaving the garage from the side door. And my son locked eyes with this same thing crouched on all fours on a lawn couch outside my bedroom window. He said it was white with pasty skin and had a long neck and big round eyes that almost glowed. Its head stayed fixed on him and straight but moved up and around clockwise and back like it was sizing them up like an owl. It was crouched with knees. He was not an owl. My son then started pushing his girl faster to the house. It was a while before he went back out there, never alone, and never at night. Just to let you know, we have never seen a raccoon or a squirrel on this property. Another time, I was on my front porch one evening. I let the dogs out one last time before bed. I noticed that they were all acting skittish. They all did their thing and piled up in front of the front door with crazy eyes as if they wanted in now. Thinking it might be coyotes, I let them in I went to the end of the porch to see what frightened them. I keep a light on above my back door and another one further down on another area of the back of the house. Something was tall enough to block out the light casting its shadow on the wall of the garage. It couldn't have been a giant moth on the light because the shadow was cast by both lights. It gave me the creeps to think that something was standing right outside my back door. My granddaughter keeps her window blinds shut after dark, even though there's no one around. She said she feels uneasy. We're not living in fear by any means. It's just different, you know? This hasn't been an everyday occurrence, but it is enough to take notice. I have no explanation as to what it is. At first I blew it off, thinking that it was just some sort of wildlife we didn't know about before. 
after seeing these things for almost three years and getting validation from others, I know that it is so much more. This happened in 1987. I'm sure about the date because of the Whittier earthquake. It just so happens that at the very moment I was painting a wall in the dining room, a different colour, when it hit, I ended up streaking paint across the wall as I ran over to hold our lovely large fish tank from falling off this stupidly flimsy stand it was on. This took place in Hacienda Heights, California. My boyfriend at the time wasn't really welcome at my mother's house because she, shouldn't, she couldn't shake this bad feeling about him. So being young and dumb, I moved out of her house and into a place I found down the street with him. I wish I'd listened to her. It was a small one bedroom bungalow. At first we were getting along just fine, but it seemed like things changed as the months passed and we started fighting more. I thought it was odd that I, Susie, homemaker, didn't even want to make that house a home. It was just a weird vibe about the place and it got darker the longer we stayed. As you walk in the partial glass front door, on the left there were two white window pane doors on the built-in bookcases on both sides of a fireplace, then the dining room and in the back was the kitchen. The bedroom was on the right. We couldn't afford a bed frame so a full side mattress was on the floor under the window and that was the only thing in there besides the clock. There was an uneasiness in that bedroom that I couldn't put my finger on. I felt very depressed in there. Oh, little things happened throughout the house from the moment we moved in. We just laughed it off. Until it was no longer funny. It seemed like when we were at odds with each other, it intensified in a dark way. Oftentimes my boyfriend would just leave and I was alone. Sometimes for days. And I thought that he did it on purpose because he knew I was scared to be there alone. At first I was fine. Not scared anything until one of those nights I was sleeping. I was jolted up by an extremely loud bang that left my ears ringing. I jumped up and at first looked out the window thinking it was something outside, but the streets were still. I checked the house, but there was nothing out of place. The next night it happened again, louder than before. Only this time I glanced at the clock before checking the house and it was 5 a.m. on the dot and my room was freezing. I tried to go back to sleep but I heard the muffled wails of a woman. I literally had to lift my head from the pillow to listen, but no one was around. The next day, my boyfriend came home and with a few words and some hand-picked flowers, all was stupidly forgiven. I told him what happened, but he shrugged it off, telling me that it could have been a backfire of the pipes, and I bought it. One early evening after dinner, we were gonna watch TV on the couch in the living room, and I excused myself to go to the bathroom. I kept hearing him yelling out things at me, but I couldn't really make out what he was saying. I opened the door and looked at him like, what? And he turned white, crawling backward on the couch with his big eyes, then leaped up and ran into the kitchen, looking round and checking the back door. He came out, saying that the door was locked from the inside. After we calmed down and I could understand him, he told me that he was talking to me in the kitchen. He asked me why I put a granny house dress on and was asking for snacks and he was getting a bit upset that I didn't answer him. I had no answers. There had been a few times we both saw what looked like a teenaged boy sitting on the front stoop, sometimes holding his head in his hands. But when we approached him, it was like he was never there. I pointed out faces in the glass panes of the bookcase that looked like they were talking to us while we were watching TV. They were just reflections of something that wasn't in the room with their features outlined by the flickering light from the TV. But after a while, the faces became more defined. In the beginning, my boyfriend thought I was making it up until he saw it for himself. We heard banging on the bathroom door like it was someone's fist, even when we weren't in there. An older guy's voice saying, ah, come on. Sending us running outside a couple times then feeling stupid sitting outside. So we went in and stayed spooked for the rest of the day. I called the landlord to ask him if something happened there or can he make it stopped? But before I could even open my mouth, he was asking if I was calling to complain about something he had no control over. In the background, I heard his wife say, is that the young couple? They want to move, don't they? There goes another one. 
It sounded like this has happened a lot to them before. So that really got my blood boiling. Why would they rent this place to us without even a heads up? Realising that they would be of no immediate help, I just hung up. I couldn't move. I had no money. And my mother for sure wouldn't let me move back in as long as I was with him. We lived there for at least four months, when our relationship started spinning out of control. He was being forceful, demanding, and drinking a lot more. One night, he asked me to pick him up, so I did. Somehow I ended up with a broken arm because I didn't want him to drive my car drunk. I had to beg him to shift gears so I could drive to the ER because he was tired and after the hospital, I was exhausted. I just wanted to sleep. So I went to the bedroom while he opted to lay on the couch and watch TV. The next thing I know, he's grabbing his stuff, saying that he's not staying there anymore and walking out, leaving me there by myself with a broken arm. Wow. I remember that it was a warm night, but it was raining, so I laid on the couch with the only screen door closed so I could hear the rain. The lights went out, freaking me out. Even more so, I put candles on the coffee table and one on the bookcase and sat back down on the couch. I was too scared to sleep in the bedroom. I sat there and saw those faces. One was an old lady. She was frowning and her mouth was moving like she was trying to over and enunciate to me tell me something or yell at me. Her face got bigger, like she was coming closer to the glass and then back, and she kept waving a finger at me. Her grey hair was straight and put back with a headband. Her mouth was just going on, opening and closing, and the candlelight glistened on her bottom teeth. Her teeth looked a little, I don't know, long and old, if that makes any sense. Then there was a middle-aged man who didn't look directly at me. He looked aggravated, but not at me. More like at everything and everyone. And then a crying teenager. His face was so full of despair. I could make out the words, please, and no, no, no. And then he put his hand on his face. Looking at him brought tears to my eyes and my heart felt so very heavy. It dawned on me that this was the kid on our doorstep. I must have sat there for hours with the blankets up to my nose until the lights came on and I fell asleep. The next morning, I walked to the corner store and called my mother, who was happy to find out I was ready to come home. Before I handed over the keys, my mother had some words with the landlord. He told her that he had the place blessed before I moved in, and he was hoping that it had worked. He also told the mom that he bought the place already haunted. All he knew from digging was that it was two bungalows together, but one burnt down. The one I was renting was the one where an old lady lived, whose grown son came on hard times because he was an alcoholic. He lost his wife and couldn't keep a job, so he and his teenage son moved into her place with her. His son was so unstable that he found a gun in the house and shot himself in the bedroom. And his grandmother died from a heart attack not long after. He didn't know what happened to the man. Talk about a roundabout. I don't know why that tune, or maybe the light reflecting off the rain on my windshield, made me think about the old lady's mouth, but it did. Now I understand a little more as to why I don't like reflective things in my home. Mm -hmm.